Your favorite car company might be owned by a different car company and you don't even know it. Jeep? Owned. Acura? Owned. Chevy? Come on. Owned. So the question is, who owns who? Or is it whom? Most every car company nowadays is owned by a bigger corporation. In fact, only 15 corporations around the world own most of the cars manufactured today. We're seeing fewer and fewer independent car manufacturers, and that can be both good and bad. Let's start with one of the biggest companies out there, General Motors. Nowadays, they rake in more than $145 billion annually, but GM wasn't always so successful. They started as a holding company, which in its simplest form is a company that buys other companies. Their first acquisition was Buick back in 1907, and soon after, they acquired Oldsmobile, Cadillac, and the Rapid Motor Vehicle Company, which later became GMC. In 1918, they acquired Chevrolet, a brand that would grow to become one of GM's biggest breadwinners. It's not just American brands though. GM also owns Chinese manufacturers Wuling, Baozhan, and Jaifeng. Just a disclaimer, there's gonna be a lot more Chinese names and I'm probably gonna butcher those too. This show ain't vegan because I'm butchering everything. Oh, that's stupid. Other car companies within the GM family include Holden, Saab, Opel, and Daewoo. Of those, only Holden and Opel are still manufacturing cars. And I should note that Opel is no longer owned by GM, but by another group called PSA. The PSA group is a French multinational corporation that owns Opel, Peugeot, Citroën, Vauxhall, and the premium mark DS. They once owned Chrysler Europe, which they bought in 1978 for $1. If given the chance to buy Chrysler for $1, I'm not sure I would have made the same decision. PSA makes upwards of $75 billion annually, making them the largest French automobile manufacturer. But right below them is Renault. Renault does $58 billion annually, but they're part of a bigger group named the Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi Alliance. I love the word alliance. Although they're not technically a merger, they kind of operate as one. Renault has a 43% stake in Nissan, Nissan has a 15% stake in Renault, and a 34% stake in Mitsubishi. This umbrella group is the parent company of Infiniti, Datsun, Dasha, Optavaz, Alpina, and the defunct brand Lada. All in all, the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance brings in $190 billion in annual sales, making them the number three top auto manufacturing group in the world. So what does this all mean for the consumer? Well, big car companies make it possible to buy a car for cheap. Right now, you can buy a Nissan Versa for $13,000 brand new, but it probably costs Nissan hundreds of millions of dollars to develop the dang thing. A car company that's just starting to get off the ground can't afford to sell a car that costs them hundreds of millions of dollars for that cheap, but Nissan can. The profit margin on economy cars is razor thin, but Nissan sells millions of Versas to make up for it. It's also easier to mass produce parts that can be installed in many different models versus developing a car from the ground up. You've probably heard of a car company going to their parts bin, right? One downside of this is that cars can all start looking the same, or at least feeling the same. Using Nissan as an example, the GTR, a $200,000 supercar, might share parts with much, much cheaper cars in their lineup. Chrysler merged with Italian car manufacturer Fiat back in 2014 to form Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, or FCA. The merger had been underway since Chrysler announced bankruptcy in April of 2009, but it wasn't finalized until five years later. This group is responsible for $111 billion in sales per year and is made up of many smaller subsidiaries. Chrysler owns Jeep, Dodge, and Ram, but they're also the parent company of other defunct brands such as AMC, Eagle, and Plymouth. Fiat owns Alfa Romeo, Maserati, Lancia, and has a 90% stake in Ferrari. You know that guy in high school who always had a girlfriend? That's Chrysler. Now he's declaring bankruptcy, but also has a hot Italian wife. Anyway, the name Daimler has been around since 1880, but it wasn't until 1926 that they merged with Benz to become Daimler-Benz and started producing the Mercedes Marks. As a conglomerate, they're responsible for over $188 billion in annual sales all across the world, 
These numbers are getting so big, they're losing meaning. They own Mercedes-Benz, smart, and the now defunct Maybach, along with Chinese companies Denza and BAIC. Although they're often in the same category, BMW makes around $75 billion less than Mercedes, coming in at just under $113 billion a year. Wow, BMW, you suck. Bayerisch Motor and Works owns Mini as well as Rolls-Royce, and I'm pretty sure I butchered that name too. Toyota is another company that's got their hands in a bunch of different cookie jars. They took in almost $261 billion last year with their brands Lexus, Hino Motors, Daihatsu, three more Chinese companies, as well as the defunct Scion brand. They also own a 5.9% stake in a Suzu and 16.6% of Subaru. And that's how you get nearly identical cars like the Toyota 86, the Subaru BRZ, and the Scion FRS. They share a lot of the same parts and are essentially the same car. Surprisingly, Toyota's largest Japanese competitor, Honda, makes about half as much as they do at $139 billion, with Acura being the only other car badge they own. South Korea-based Hyundai owns Kia and Genesis and pulls in almost $86 billion a year. The Tata Group, based out of Mumbai, India, pulls in a cool $100 billion in sales to their brands Jaguar, Land Rover, and of course, Tata. The only Chinese group that makes this list is Geely. The group has been around since 1986 and really only entered the automobile market in 1997, making them one of the newest and most successful car manufacturers to date. This group owns Chinese brands Geely and Link, as well as Lotus, Volvo, and Proton. They bring in about $15 billion a year in sales. The only two brands on this list that are independent are Suzuki, based out of Japan, and relative newcomer Tesla. They do about $34 billion and $12 billion in sales, respectively. Suzuki has been around for over 100 years, and their profits rely heavily on their motorcycles and ATV sales. Tesla has only been around since 2003, so how are they able to roll with the big boys? Tesla's business strategy was to sell their high-end electric cars to a more affluent crowd at first. More expensive vehicles have a much higher profit margin, so less sales are needed to make the money back. Then, when they become more financially stable, they were able to release models that were more affordable to a broader consumer base. So the sales of the higher-end models bankrolled the R&D for their people's car, the Model 3. Basically, it was the opposite business model for Volkswagen, which happens to be the number one highest producing conglomerate in the entire automotive industry. <laughs> The Volkswagen Group is made up of Audi, Porsche, Volkswagen, Bentley, Bugatti, Seat, Skoda, and Lamborghini, as well as other smaller subsidiaries. They raked in over $278 billion in 2018 and employ over 630,000 people in 153 countries worldwide. They produced 10 million and 83,000 vehicles last year. Sure, your favorite brand might be owned by some bigger, most likely more boring brand, but don't let that discourage you because without that helping hand, your favorite rides might not be around at all. Hey, a big thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this episode of Wheelhouse. Hey, it sucks, but two out of three guys will start losing hair by the time they're 35 and um, that's coming up for me. That's scary. What doesn't suck is that Keeps hair loss treatments are up to 90% effective at reducing and preventing further hair loss. You used to have to go to the doctor's office and get a prescription for hair loss medication, but now thanks to Keeps, you can get that same prevention from the comfort of your own home. Getting started with Keeps is super easy. A licensed physician will review your information online and get you what you need from 10 to 35 bucks a month. Plus, you can use my special link in the description right there and you'll get your first order of treatment for 40% off. Guys, that's 40%, it's a lot. Go to keeps.com slash wheelhouse, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash wheelhouse, and take care of that wonderful mop of hair today. Hey, thanks for watching Wheelhouse. Hit this yellow subscribe button right here to subscribe to Donut, as well as hitting that like button and little bell button down there so you get notified when we post new videos. I know it's a lot to ask of you, but it actually really helps us out. We got OG Donut merch back in the store. Buy it. This shirt is actually really comfortable and has a little neat little yellow tag right there. How cool is that? Be nice. I'll see you next time.